This episode is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash TSE. Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, and MP3 player. One of the books I just finished, you can go ahead and check it out, is To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. I've listened to this book twice now, and I, I just absolutely love it. Sometimes I don't get a chance to sit down and physically read a book, but it's a great way to catch up and to build up my sales knowledge. To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. It's actually narrated by Daniel himself, and it's, it's a great book. Highly recommend it. We'll put information in our show notes. Or you can simply go to audibletrial.com forward slash TSE and search for Daniel Pink, To Sell is Human. Again, audibletrial.com forward slash TSE. Hey, happy new year. The old is gone, the new is here. The happy new year song of cheer. I don't know how to sing a New Year's song, but Happy New Year's to all. Come along. Woo! Hey, hey everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And you're probably listening to this episode on your new phone, your new tablet, your new whatever. Make sure you go ahead and to share the goodness, tell other people about this podcast. I would love, love, love that. Our goal is to grow our community, to touch people's lives. I've seen so many great success from just folks implementing the things they've learned from our guests and to earn a greater deal of income and to be able to do more things with their family, accomplish their goals. There's so many other sellers out there that need to hear this message. I'm going to do my part. And will you do your part and help me out? Tell somebody about the podcast, whether you share this this episode with them or share it on social media or invite them to listen to it. It would be great, 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 greatly appreciated. So thank you so much. Did I tell you I want you to share the podcast? <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. As we dive into this new year today, we are going to have some great new content, great episodes. We have a great episode lined up today with our guests. But before we dive into all the fun stuff, you know I have to give shout outs. That's just what we do. Want to give a big shout out to Cheryl. Also want to give a big shout out to Melissa, to Wilner Jean Charles, to Levi Baker, to Linda Yates, and also to Shauna Haas Settler, Ron Haas Settler, Jessica Horton, and also want to give a big shout out to Sam Ba and to Matt Lockhart. Thank you guys all so much for all the great things that you're doing, for the great help that you've been to me and to my family. You're just awesome, awesome friends. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I wish you all the best in this new year and that you accomplish your goals and that you find all the great things that is out there for you. So, hey, enjoy that. And today, our episode, you're definitely going to enjoy. It's a good friend of mine named Tom Schwab. Tom actually has been doing some really cool things with podcasting. And as we go in this new year, you got to try new things. You know, it's important for us to try things. If you're doing the same thing you're doing as you did last year and you want to accomplish new goals, you're probably not going to get them. You have to try new things. You have to try and going after and using some unconventional means and some new tactics. And I've seen this over translated into my life over and over again when I've just gotten out of the rut of just keep in, you know, being in a mediocrity and, and keeping doing the same old thing and tried new things and implemented them. I saw greater success. The podcast came about from me trying new things. And look where it's at today. You're listening to us because of that. So as you listen to this episode, listen to what my good friend Tom has to share. And I guarantee you're going to love this episode. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Welcome to the show, Tom. Donald, I am thrilled to be here. You know, I'm excited to have you. And you are one of those individuals that I just love being connected with. You always make somebody feel good. So especially online, I got a little notification a little bit ago on Twitter. You know, I'm excited for my conversation with Donald. I'm like, yes, somebody's excited to talk to me. You know, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm excited. And I know you're going to bring us tons of value. But before we dive in, I want to talk a little bit about Tom. Tell us about your coolest sales experience when you were the customer. Oh, this by far has to be when I had a little kid that came up to me that wanted to sell me sweeping my porch. And, you know, there's no person that's easier to sell than a salesman if there's somebody is a good salesman. And this young <laughs> person was probably 10 years old and he's got this old broom and he comes up and he says, how nice and beautiful my house is. And, uh, but he noticed there was some dust on the porch and he'd be happy to sweep that for me. And I'm thinking, 
oh man, this guy is perfect. You know, if he wasn't 10 years old, I would hire him, you know, for, to be part of my sales force. And so I hired him for it. And about five minutes later, I get a knock on the door and he says, you know, this old broom just isn't doing a great job. Would you have a better one that I could use? Because I want to give you the best possible outcome. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this guy didn't even have the tools to do it. And he sold me and now he's selling me on helping him. And so with that, this guy was just so great. I told him that, uh, I tell you what, if you bring my broom back at the end, I'll pay you then. But uh, I walked him up and down the street and invited him to, or introduced him to all the neighbors. And uh, to me, that was, you know, what sales is supposed to be, you know, someone with a heart out there, a passion, wanting to serve people and do the best job they can. You know, I love that story. I, I just imagine myself being, I imagine that kid. I remember myself growing up in Jamaica. I used to get some mangoes off the tree and have them out on a little fence trying to sell them or, you know, getting cookies and putting it in bags and, you know, trying to sell. So I resonated with that little guy. So I, I could have learned a lot from him back then, man. He was a slick one. <laughs> I don't know where he is now, but uh, I'll probably be working for him someday. <laughs> Wasn't his name Mark? Last name Zuckerberg or something? <laughs> uh, yeah, he, uh, may, maybe it was uh, Cuban or something like that. Oh, Cuban, Cuban. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, Tom, I gave a little bit of intro to you in the teaser there as I top of the episode, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about what, what you do? Uh, sure. Well, I always say that my first job out of college was running nuclear power plants. And I've run nuclear power plants and I've run small businesses. And one of them was easy because it came with a manual. Now, I've gone through the, the corporate world and <laughs> into sales and marketing, but I always look back at things as an engineering problem to solve. You know, I, I was trained as a mechanical engineer, and that's one of the things I, I really love now about the Internet is that we're all building, you know, these sales and marketing engines online. And, you know, it used to be that with sales and marketing, people would say, yeah, you, half the money you spend is wasted. You just never know what half it is. Well, now we really know what, what half is wasted and we don't have to waste that. And there's a lot of problems in this world, but the tools that we have are amazing. There is no better time to be a business owner, to be a salesman. You don't have to, uh, to drive your car everywhere. You can, uh, you can connect with people with free tools. And I'm excited to talk about some of the ways that, uh, that we've worked with clients that are small businesses, entrepreneurs, sole openers on how they can use this technology for free really to talk directly to their ideal customers. I like that. I like the fact that you mentioned the ideal customers and talk directly to them. Um, we know there's been methodologies that's been around for ages, and it's refreshing to see and learn of other new tools that we can do use. So I won't take up much more time. Let's dive straight into that fun stuff then. The discussion at hand is what we're talking on right now, the medium of podcasts. But why are podcasts so powerful for entrepreneurs and salespeople to get to ideal customers? Well, today, it's never been easier to get your message out. But the question is, is, how do you get through all that noise? Be it on social media, be it on emails, be it on blogs. It seems like everything that comes up all of a sudden gets really noisy and uh, it's hard to break through that. And we've built businesses on content. And for a long time, we were doing it with blogs. But one of the things we saw was that blogs were being less and less effective. With a couple of clients, we thought, wow, they've got such a great story to tell. They've got such a great voice. How could we connect with ideal customers with this? And, you know, the first thought was, well, we could do a podcast. And anybody that tells you doing a podcast is easy has either never done a podcast or never done it well. You know, Donald, <laughs> I give you a whole lot of credit and people don't understand the artwork that goes into this. It's not just recording and, uh, and hitting stop at the end. There's a lot of work that goes into that. And honestly, we looked at it and said, we don't know that we want to put this much work into it. And so we thought, well, could we be a guest on other people's podcasts, people that have a show and already are talking to our ideal customers? So we got our client on there and we were blown away. You know, a, a good blog will convert visitors to leads at about one to two percent. And what we were seeing from podcast interviews was conversion rates of 25%, 50%. We've even had some that convert visitors to leads at 75%. And I think part of that is because the medium is so rich. You know, you get to talk to somebody for a half hour. They get to know, like, and trust you. And 
from an ideal customer standpoint, either they're ready to engage with you and they come to your website ready to engage or they don't. And that's okay too, because what you want is not just leads, you want hot leads. And that's what we're seeing is coming from a podcast. And, uh, you know, I, I started out as a sales rep and we talked about before that there were years that I put 50,000 miles on my car going from customer to customer. And I'm just scratching my head now going, boy, if I had the tools now, I could connect with thousands of customers talking on podcasts here, connecting with them digitally and, and letting them come back to me. Uh, you know, instead of pushing my message out to them, just serving them and having them come back to me. I think in this, being a podcaster myself and seeing both sides, I had, when I first started a podcast, it was more of like a hobby. Now it led into, you know, our business and, and what we're doing, um, not just a podcast, but obviously the things beyond the podcast, the training and stuff. But what happened was the voice of being that, that podcast host, like you're saying, just got out there and people got familiar with you. And the same thing, I've seen it. I've been uh, interviewed on other podcasts and I've seen the benefit of that. And I actually had opportunities where this wasn't exactly my ideal client for when I was doing software sales, but I still had strategic alliances that were formed and with other salespeople. And I also had, you know, leads that came in. It wasn't like, you know, the taps weren't just coming just unlimited because again, it wasn't my ideal. But how does a salesperson or entrepreneur listening to this episode, they just got excited from what you just mentioned. The numbers just blew their minds. How did it get started? How did they find the ideal podcast to go on? Or do they need to do an evaluation of the ideal customer first? Well, the first thing you have to do is your ideal customer. And if you go on podcasts or you don't, if you're just brick and mortar, if you're just driving from account to account, you need to define who your ideal customer is. I always say that the worst advice I ever got in my life came from my grandfather. It's the <laughs> only wrong thing this old Irish gentleman ever told me. He told me, always pick carefully who you drink with because you can't pick who you work with. And for him, that was, that was his reality. You know, he's, he was a mechanic in a town of 3,000 people. They were all his customers. Donald, for you and I, the world is much bigger. And so we can be very, very selective on who we want to work with. And really, not only do we want to work with ideal customers, but they want to work with us. And you just don't find those by accident. It's, it's very important to define who they are. And, and some people call that, you know, your avatar or your ideal buyer persona. Really, it's just that dream customer that's going to be not only a customer, but a lifetime customer and an advocate. So that is always the first place to start. And if you can define that person, now you know what to say to them. You know what their pain points are and you know where they hang out. So that's the first part in this whole process. So let's let's walk me through that. And I, I know how to you know do some of this, but you know, some someone is a salesperson. What are some of the strategies you share with your clients on what they should do? Should they just go uh, search online, or do you go to the iTunes, or how do they go about finding those podcasts now that may be sure. ideal? Sure. So with that, there's a couple ways you can do it. Probably the best way is ask your customers right now, those ideal clients. Hey, do you guys listen to podcasts? Which ones do you like? Which ones do you find engaging? Because if your ideal customers are listening to it already, chances are there's going to be more ideal customers on there. And the other thing is that if you get on that podcast, your ideal customers are going to think you're a god too, because it's like, wow, Donald, I just heard you on that podcast. So you get credibility from that also. But put yourself in the shoes of your customers and say, okay, what podcast would they be interested in? And you can go to iTunes and break it down by category or search keywords. And a great place to start with is the new and noteworthy. These are podcasts that have been out for less than 90 days, but are really getting some traction. And those are great ones to get on first and to, to get a handful where you've got interviews. Because the hardest interview you're ever going to have is your first one. You're going to be <laughs> nervous. You know, they're going to ask, have you ever been on a podcast before? Because they're worried that you're not going to bring value to their show. So once you can focus on that, and here's what I can offer you, here's another podcast that I was on, and they can listen to you and say, okay, this, this person seems legit, then it's going to be easier to get on them. And really, we always say it's about a 90-day starting process. After you've been doing this strategy for about 90 days, you know enough podcasters. And you know at the end of this episode, when Donald and I turn off the recording, we'll be chatting for a little bit. And one of the questions will be probably come up is he'll ask me, hey, do you know any good guests? Because he's always looking for people to interview. And I'll probably ask the question, 
hey, do you know any other podcast where you think I would be a good guest on it? So with that, you know, it's just like uh, in sales, asking for referrals afterwards, and it just builds on itself there. So true with that. And I, I like the idea that you mentioned of making sure you offer, oh, I've been on this podcast or some kind of credibility because as a podcast host, you get a lot of requests and you want to make sure that you're getting the right people for your audience or, you know, it's not spammy. Like for instance, somebody come to me and they are having a gardening summit and they want to get on podcasts. It may not be the best fit for my audience. And sometimes I have to graciously tell people, you know, thank you, but no, thank you. It's, it's not a fit for what we're doing. How do you make sure that you're not anything else you can do to make sure you're not coming off as a spam spammer. Ah, and that's the worst. And nobody likes cold calls, right? Nobody likes making them. Nobody likes getting them. So I always tell people that make sure it's not a cold call. So listen to the podcast first and think of, am I a good fit for this? Reach out to the podcast host and leave him a review on iTunes. He or she will know who you are because they'll read every one of those reviews, you know, connect with them on social media. And then and then reach out to them and make it very clear of, hey, I, this is what value I bring and this is what I would like to share with your audience and make it very brief to the point. You know, nobody wants to read a, a seven page email and you can even go ahead and put this one page sort of pitch sheet at the end of that and says, you know, here's my brief bio. Here's a picture. Here's all my contact information. And, you know, I'll, I've got an example of those and I'll make a, a special page. So if if anybody wants to see what one of those pitch sheets looks like and what you should have on that, you can just go to tmschwab.com forward slash TSE and everything Donald and I talk about will be there. But always just, you know, put yourself in your customer's perspective, the host perspective. Your job, once you get on the show, is to make the host look like a genius for having you on. Sweet. You're doing pretty good, man. I like this. <laughs> Now, and again, one of the things I mentioned at the very top is that this is new. This is new for a lot of people. And I've, you know, business owners are starting to do it. A lot of speakers, a lot of, you know, obviously you listen to our podcast and I reach out to people and people reach out to me as well. And, you know, a lot of them are authors or they're someone in the sales world or marketing. And it's just really neat. But to see a salesperson do that, I would tell you that would be different. That would be unique. Because you meant you have something on selling software on uh, podcasts, right? Don't you exactly. Have a, yeah. Do you mind talking about that a little bit and how a salesperson could, you know, go about that when they're actually on a podcast? I mean, that actually started with we had a, a client that uh, was very interested, had interested in using this and said, how would you ever sell a product? So with that, we just did a blog and said, OK, here's how the six steps that you would go through in order to sell a product online. You know, and the six steps are the same, whether you're an author, a sales person, a coach, but you can take those for, for whatever product that you're pitching. So the first one is always defining who you want to talk to. Number two is defining why you're an expert. And if you're a salesman, you know more about that product than the average person. The third one is finding the podcasts that your ideal listeners listen to and pitching yourself to that host. Four is getting on there and having a great interview. You know, get people the opportunity to know, like, and trust you. Tell them the story behind the product. Tell them what problems you solve. You know, don't be selling, but get them the opportunity to get to know you. So that's step four. And then step five is give them a reason to come to your website. You know, we talk about the call to action. Well, give them something to move them toward that. I mentioned it earlier when I mentioned that offer and where you could get it on my on my website. And that was the whole purpose there, to take somebody from being a listener to being a visitor. And then once you get them on the website, well, don't just say, hey, go to my homepage, because you never know when they're going to go there. This is evergreen content. So they could show up the day the podcast launches or a year later. So you want to make sure that you send them to a welcome page. And I mentioned that before. So you know, the welcome page is to bring them in there and show them trust seals, right? Things that make them feel welcome, that they're in the right place. So, you know, if you go to the one with, you know, tmschwab.com forward slash TSE, what are you going to see? You're going to see a logo. You're going to see from the sales evangelist. You're going to see a picture of Donald there because you know him, you trust him. You're going to see some copy there. 
of what we talked about, and there'll be some offers down there. So at this point, now you can put some of the offers behind a form. So if you go to that page, one of the things you're going to see is a a free 30-minute webinar, a training on how you can use this. So with that, you know, I ask for an email address and that starts the conversation. So really you can do this for any product, for any market. And I've heard some, you know, local salespeople say, well, why would I ever want to be on a podcast? You know, I can only sell in the state of Michigan here. So what do I do with all the clients that are outside my geography? Well, you know what? You will be the most loved salesman if you start getting leads outside your territory and you start giving them to other sales reps or your current customers will see, wow, I must have the number one sales rep in my territory because this is the guy that's on the podcast talking about this. And I think it gives a lot of authority figure. Now, if I was to, I mean, just this just came to mind. If I was a sales rep and I did that, and I was to go to some company that I'm trying to form a strategic alliance with, you know, say a complimentary company, I sell batteries and they sell flashlights, then, you know, I'm on this podcast and it's a national podcast or, you know, listen to all over. And I'm, you know, I can say, hey, I go on these podcasts and I'll be more than willing to mention your company or something like that, or, you know, whatever your partnership, I'm sure you could figure out a way to bring that up. But, you know, that becomes a whole different game changer now because you bring more added value to the table as opposed to, hi, I sell batteries, you sell flashlight, you want to give me leads, <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes the host is your best customer, right? If, mm-hmm. if they're the, the host of the podcast, chances are they're just like everybody else, that ideal buyer persona of their listener. So you make that relationship with the host too, which is so powerful. Back on that page, I'll put a link. There was a, uh, an article from, I believe it was Fast Company, and it talked about podcasting being the new networking. So <laughs> would, would Donald and I have met each other if it wasn't for podcasts? Well, you know, we've traded emails back and forth. We follow each other on social media and we're talking now. I'm sure we're going to be following up. So it's almost like we've built this relationship. He's down in Florida. He's smart. I'm up in Michigan, you know, just waiting for the first snow to start. (laughs) Uh, But it's a great way to build relationships here too. It sure is, man. I've been able to connect and a lot of people have seen the listeners that, excuse me, the guests that we brought on the show. And I would have to pay thousands of dollars to sit down and chat with them. But with the podcast medium, I was able to, you know, get right in there and to have really meaningful conversations, especially like with Guy Kawasaki or even with Tom, you. I mean, it's like, it's just people like yourself, movers and shakers are not going to sit around and, you know, just be there. But this is a way that we can both get value out from each other. And it's a, it's a powerful medium. Donald, you know, I'm going to promote the heck out of this episode. Especially that part where I got compared to Guy Kawasaki. Thank you very much. Hey, you can put that in there. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome, man. There's a, a couple more questions I have. And I and I really like the fact that you mentioned the post, you know, after someone was, you know, you, you don't just go on a podcast and then it's all hunky-dory. You get off the podcast and you have something to send salespeople to. And I think one of the important things to mention there, especially if you're a salesperson working for a major company or if you're a mom and pop, small company, you don't have to have a, you know, a big website, just have to have somewhere for folks to come back to. And if you're using WordPress or any of these other sites, you can easily spin up a page, use the same page and just repurpose the the content. Or just if you're a salesperson, create a blog, you must have a blog. And if you don't have a blog in this digital age, you're living behind, but you can create a simple page with free tools like Sumo Me to get people to put their emails in for something. So, you know, there's- I just- I just saw one and hopefully won't date this. Somebody that's listening to it two years from now. Uh Uh, But even if you don't have a website, there's a entrepages just came out and for free, you can get up to 10 of these welcome landing pages and they'll set it up where they'll automatically email you the lead. So you get an automatic email from it. So you could set this up, you know, even somebody that's not techie in 10 or 15 minutes before you go on the podcast and get everything done there. Really, you know, the tools that we have at our disposal here are just amazing. That is phenomenal. It's called Entrepages? Entrepages. And I'll put a link to that. Actually, there's a video that shows exactly how to set this up for free. And any leads that come in, you can either send it to your, you know, your CRM or you can just have them email it directly to you. So if you're interested in that, just go to tmschwab.com forward slash TSE and I'll make sure it's on that page also. Boom. That is so smart. Whoever thought of that, that was a a genius move right there. (laughs) 
That is a great tool. And, and I think that's what it all comes back down to is, you know, there's no more excuses. The barriers for entry has been lowered. And anyone listening to this episode can go connect with you and see some of the different strategies and success that you have and then come back. I know you shared a little bit of the success earlier. Any other stories that you would be willing to share of how others have implemented the strategy? Oh, it's it's been amazing that uh, it's only limited by your creativity. We've had authors that have done virtual book tours. So if you think a salesman driving around from place to place is bad, you know, we've got authors that would try doing, you know, 30 cities in 30 days just so they could get the word out about their book. And you look and say, well, why would you want to do that? Why don't you just do it over a podcast and have all the podcasts uh, released the week your book does? Uh, We've had people do it for Kickstarter campaigns where, you know, you need to get that word out and that momentum very early. So how do you do that? Do you buy Facebook ads? Well, why don't you just get on a dozen podcasts that, you know, people that would support you are on. So really you can do it for anything. And I guess the, the big question I would have is if your ideal customer is listening to podcasts or even, you know, on-demand radio is really what it is right now, you need to be in front of them because they're going to be listening to somebody and ultimately it's either going to be you or your competitor. And so there's that first mover advantage. And I would encourage everybody to take a look at that. Very, very well said. I appreciate that, man. And I, I can't agree with you more as a podcast host. I agree with you 100% on everything that you're saying, and it just drives tons of value. And again, if anyone's listening to this, you have to, have to take some of the words that Tom is sharing, and you just got to apply it. So, I mean, it's great. As we get ready to wrap up right now, what's one major takeaway you'd like listeners to take and walk away with from this discussion? The one thing that I would warn people is that getting on the podcast is what everybody focuses on. You know, they ask, well, how do you get on a podcast? And that's actually the easy part. And now if, once again, there's like these nine secrets that we have that you can get and they'll get you on your first few podcasts. But it's just like in sales. It's the process that's the magic. It's the process that will will make it work. And I hate to use the word magic because it's not. It's a process that's proven, you know, that if you identify your ideal buyer persona, identify your expertise, you know, get on the right podcast, take people from being listeners to visitors and visitors to leads. It's a process that you can do over and over. And our most successful clients we've worked with are the ones that have figured out, you know what, I could have somebody else, an assistant, whoever, set up all the interviews for me. I can do the actual interview and then I can have somebody else make me the the welcome page and do the social media. So they're the ones that are just killing it a half hour at a time. And I think everybody, you know, has a half hour to talk to a thousand, ten thousand ideal customers. And you can do that once a, if you did it once a day, you know, five, five days a week, you're doing some, getting on a podcast on average. I guarantee you're going to see some results. You're going to get some good leads, folks coming back to you, and then you can continue to extend value, nurture, and get those to convert. Very much. And the next time that somebody goes and starts Googling your name to find out about you, you know what they're going to find out? Not only your Facebook profile and your LinkedIn profile, but the next 10 pages are going to be podcast interviews that you've done. And they will look at you and go, wow, this person is a true professional. Authority figure there. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. I mean, imagine that with as a salesperson, man, if you know, you're know you selling software and they're researching companies and put those people's name in, it would just be a nine day. Like, I want to know why this guy is so big. I want to do business with him. And people do stuff like that. I mean, those little biases are there. <laughs> and it doesn't cost you anything. Not other, at all. <laughs> other than a little bit of time. Amen. And and I know you you guys have services that help out with that, don't you? Very much so. And uh, we teach the process. I've got a book coming out that teaches the entire thing, but there's also an online course and it's called the Connect Course. And it teaches you how to grow your business as a podcast guest, turning listeners into customers. That is great. So we'll link again. I'm sure that's all linked back into that uh, page and and our show notes will link back to that as well. So folks can get access to it and, and get connected with you. Well, thank you, Donald. This has been awesome. No, man, it's been great. And uh, we really want to appreciate your time. If some folks want to get back to you, we'll send them to that page. Is there any other way you want them to know about your social media or anything like that as well? Or You know, I'm on uh, Twitter at TM Schwab. I'm also on LinkedIn. I love that platform. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm the only Tom in Tom Schwab in Kalamazoo, Michigan. So definitely reach out <laughs> to me there. And one of my favorite quotes is by a, a guy by the name of Derek Sivers, who, um, 
wrote anything you want. And one of the things that he said is, what's ordinary to you is amazing to me. So I love connecting with other people, different ideas, this cross-pollination of ideas. And so please, if, you, um, if you're so uh, interested, just reach out to me. They're at tmschwab.com forward slash TSE or on LinkedIn. Awesome. Well, we thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing some value with us. This is a, got some, uh, got my mind blown here. <laughs> so. Well, thank you, Donald. Uh, like I said, the only way that this could be better if we both were sitting in Florida right now. Next time we'll make sure that happens. Amen. <laughs> Tom shared some great insights, some great ideas there. I hope that you're able to take them and you can apply them, especially as it comes to podcasting. There are so many great opportunities that are out there for you. Whether you host your own podcast or you go on other podcasts, I cannot tell you enough how awesome this is. It's been a great blessing in my life to have this podcast. I've been able to speak all over the country in different places. It's just a remarkable thing. And all of this started from just doing a podcast. And again, whether you're hosting or you're going to other podcasts, there are great opportunities out there. Highly encourage you to investigate it. Stay connected with Tom. Learn about some of the things that he's sharing, some of the things that he's doing. And you'll witness some of those great success. You'll be able to feel them and see them and enjoy them yourself. You can't keep doing the same old thing that you did yesterday and expect a new result, man. You got to try new things. Come on now. Told you. Taught you better than that. All in all, I want you to be successful. <laughs> want you to be happy. Most importantly, I want you to go out and do big things. Happy 2016.